Welcome again, adventurers. Uh, today we're going to be doing another build video, this time building out a psychic. Um, recently released the psychic video, the class analysis, and there's a lot of comments on that one and just kind of got me thinking about builds. And I don't know, this is what I do when I'm a little bit bored in the afternoon is I just make builds for no reason. So let's dive in, starting with our ancestry. Okay. So I am going to pick Goblin. I love the Goblin Ancestry. It's really fun, has lots of great roleplay hooks in it, just lots of, you know, funny Goblin voices. They're very um, charismatic, you know, they've got that charisma boost. Uh, they're very determined, I guess, or maybe fearless in what they do. So they're good, strong characters to have in your party. And they're kind of goofy and funny. Specifically, we're going to pick a goblin here because I think they make great spellcasters, uh, especially if you are a charisma-based spellcaster. Even though technically I don't think I'm going to go with one of the charisma, uh, is that the unconscious mind, or uh, this time. So th I think this is going to be an intelligence-based character, but that charisma boost is still nice. And yes, I know you can do the standard ability boost now, but I still like using the boost as given by the ancestry or at least somewhat close to it otherwise it sometimes feels like you're getting away from what the ancestry is if i had a like i don't know strength and wisdom based goblin yeah that would be fun but is that really a goblin is kind of what i think so anyway goblin is what we're going with all right so we've got a goblin and i am going to go with the piter tender yeah, I think this is going to be a cool background for what we want to do. I also like that it's going to give us alchemical crafting uh, because we're going to see how that kind of ties into the theme of this psychic in a bit. And then, of course, for our class, we are going to choose psychic. Uh, let's go ahead and choose our conscious and subconscious minds now. I think I said unconscious earlier. I meant subconscious. I'm going to go with the oscillate, oh, oscillating, oscillating, <laughs> oscillating wave with this one uh, because of produced flame. And if you know goblins, you know where I'm going with this. For the subconscious mind, I think I'm going to go with. What did I want to do? Gathered lore, maybe. I want one of the intelligence based so not emotional acceptance or wandering reverie let's go with precise this i like precise discipline this is going to play into the theme of this character okay so we've got oscillating wave precise discipline let's just take a look at what those do for us before we pick other feats and well i guess not really feats but uh our heritage and ancestry feet there. So the spells that are granted by this uh, conscious mind are produce flame, ray of frost, and thermal stasis. They are amped. Uh, when you use the amped produce flame, you can actually do splash damage and you increase the damage. 1d10 fire damage plus 1 fire splash damage. That's the amp of that. And on Ray of Frost, when you amp, uh, you actually get some temp HP oops, back from casting. So the Ray deals 1d10 cold damage, and you gain temporary hit points equal to half the damage that the target takes. So keep that in mind. And then Thermal Stasis is kind of cool. Uh, this lets you grant a resistance to against fire and against cold damage to a target. So you could do this on one of your allies or yourself. We are also granted the Burning Hands spell. So lots of fire here. Uh, before we pick out the rest of our spells and start uh, talking through what this character can do, let's set our abilities and pick our heritage and ancestry feat. Because we are going to be an intelligence-based psychic, we want to make sure to boost intelligence all throughout. We're also going to boost dexterity as much as we can for that sweet, sweet armor class. I'm going to boost wisdom to offset the wisdom flaw from earlier. 
And from here, it doesn't matter too much. Kind of just depends on what you want to do. You already have one point of charisma, so that's kind of nice. You could just leave that. Uh, I'm going to go constitution just because being survivable is kind of nice. Yay, my HP jumped up to 13. Still pretty squishy, but, you know, at least this isn't like an AC 14 and HP 12 kind of a situation. I'm going to pick my ancestry feat first because you probably guessed what I'm going to do by now. I'm going to go with burn it. Fire fascinates you. Your spells and alchemical items that deal fire damage, damage gain a status bonus to damage equal to half the spell's level or one quarter the item's level, minimum one. You also gain a plus one status bonus to any persistent fire damage you deal. So we're going to add damage to all of our fire cantrips and spells through this burn it uh, ancestry feat. And keep in mind that produced flame on a critical hit deals persistent fire damage, so we could be dealing bonus persistent fire damage too. That is really going to help us add up. Now for the heritage, I'm going to kind of lean into what the uh, oscillating wave is giving us. Remember that subcon or that conscious mind, sorry, states that when you use heat or you add energy on your next turn, you must remove energy. So kind of a hot and cold thing going on. So we used burn it for ancestry feet. And therefore I'm going to go with snow goblin, the opposite cold for my heritage. Uh, this gives us the ability to resist some environmental cold effects and gives us cold resistance equal to half our level. Okay. So I hope by now the character idea is start of sort of uh, coming into play. It's a very hot and cold. I, that's why I chose precise discipline. This build is sort of about order in the world. And I think the background plays into that too. Uh, it's kind of life and death, hot and cold balance. That's what this character is all about. Now we can go and select some more spells. Um, I think... I think it's going to be Scorching Blast. Uh, I know that's kind of a rare one, uh, so maybe GM wouldn't allow it, but come on, another fire spell? It just makes sense with this. I guess, in a way, it would almost make more sense to go with something that's cold, though, too. Um, but, man, this is a good one, so I'm just going to go with it. Now, as far as the cantrips go, uh, you don't have much. I could go with, you know, Chill Touch or something like that. But I kind of like going with some utility cantrips for this build because we already have two pretty good attack cantrips with Produce Flame and Ray of Frost. So I'm going to go with No Direction. Um... I mean, Phase Bolts is always a good one. Shield, probably. I always like Shield because, you know, it is just so helpful. Uh, but I do think that I'm going to go with maybe Time Sense. I haven't used this one much, but I like No Direction and Time Sense together. So let's do that, and then let's round it out with Shield because, man, survivability is just great. Shield is always a great uh, third action on your turn. Okay. And then we have a bunch of skill training because of that high intelligence. I would suggest you know, filling out that Arcana is always helpful. Acrobatics so you can escape stuff. After this, I mean, it's sort of up to you where you want to go with the character. You have a little bit of charisma, so you might want to go ahead and add some diplomacy or deception, whatever it happens to be. Um, I'm going to go society because I think that makes sense, like working in funerals, like you meet a lot of people, you're going to know a lot about society, right? Uh, thievery, stealth, stealth makes sense. I'll do that. Um, beyond that, it doesn't matter too much. This is where I kind of get into what is your party lacking. This is a good session zero kind of a thing. See what else might be needed. Uh, so let's just click on uh, 
nature and medicine for now. Again, kind of makes sense working in the, the funeral industry. You know a little bit, but not be great at medicine. Okay. Now, for some reason within Path Builder here, I'm not seeing uh, my alchemical book, uh, item book here, but as you would imagine, when you, uh, let's see, I'm getting four common first level alchemical items in my formula book. Formula book. Of course, I'm going to do Frost File and Alchemist Fire in there, and then maybe do an Elixir of Life because that's always good. And I don't know, pick something else beyond that. Uh, again, kind of see what your party needs. So let's talk about how to use this character in combat. Okay. So I think that a lot of times, I'm gonna write out like the ideal uh, situation here. Ideal situation would be round one, you want to cast uh, Amped Produce Flame. Why? Because you wanna do extra damage. Uh, quite often when an encounter starts, it might be kinda your team on one side and the enemies on the other and they might be those enemies might be grouped so you can hit them with that amped produce flame which is going to do some splash damage remember and you can then do damage to more than one at a time keep in mind with burn it you will be doing some extra damage on that so that is really handy round two you want to unleash psyche And then you want to cast uh, Amped Ray of Frost. Why that? Well, we want to unleash Psyche to start doing damage, right? And remember that when Ray of Frost is Amped, it's going to deal 1d10 cold damage and then grant temporary hit points equal to half the damage that the target takes. The thing is, by amping, or I'm sorry, by unleashing Psyche first, we're going to add two points of damage. So that'll be 1d10 plus two. Not only is that good for adding more damage, but because we are great gaining temporary hit points back from uh, or half the damage, by unleashing Psyche, adding damage, we're actually adding temp hit points to ourselves at the same time. So that's why we kind of want to do it that way. And then round three, you can do a level spell, like Burning Hands. Now, the cool thing about this is this will have bonus damage from Unleash Psyche and from Burn It. So when you are doing your Burning Hands and ideally hitting multiple enemies at once, well, you are doing the damage dice, which is okay, but now you're going to be adding two points of damage from Unleashed Psyche, as well as a point of damage from Burn It. So you're doing those damage dice plus three in an area of effect. That is gonna be some pretty darn good damage output for this caster. The other cool thing about it, I was sort of wondering what exactly is the purpose of your other spell here, Thermal Stasis. You could start sneaking in a thermal stasis or two as a third action if you wanted on some of your allies now that way if they are in the way of your area of effect you still might do some damage to them in the end of course depending on the reflex save all that kind of stuff but you will be doing less damage to them you're giving them some resistance to fire damage so when you go in and blast the enemies and maybe char one of your uh, allies too, well, you're not going to hit your ally nearly as bad as you're hitting your enemies. So that is a really, I think maybe that is what that spell is designed to do, is to allow you to do some sort of AOE uh, environmental sort of effects and not hurt your allies as much as you are the enemies. Other cool things to think about here are... I'm going to just write out some third actions here. 
even though you should be thinking about your third action as your first action, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, you can throw a bomb. You are going to be able to make some alchemical items. You've got pretty good crafting, very good crafting, in fact, and you've got uh, you're you're trained in alchemical, or you've got the alchemical crafting feat, so you can make some alchemist fire. And again, you're going to do extra damage from burn it. Uh, you could also consider the, I think, is it the red pitch bomb, I want to say, that doesn't do as much upfront fire damage, but does a lot of persistent fire damage, because again, that is going to uh, keep burning on that enemy with that extra damage from burning. Other things you can do, of course, you know, shield, that's good. You can... This is what I like. You can cal oops, calculate threats. That is the action granted to you from the precise discipline subconscious mind. Has a similar effect to shield, uh, boosting your AC and uh, reflex saves, which is really nice. Uh, so it might be really smart to use shield and maybe you get hit while your shield is up and you use shield block and that shield spell is then... Uh, sort of dissipated for the next 10 minutes. Well, guess what? You can then use Calculate Threats afterwards. So you have multiple ways to defend yourself in addition to those temporary uh, hit points that you will be gaining from Ray of Frost. So overall, as far as casters go, this should be a pretty, it's not gonna be tanky, I don't wanna say that word, but it's a pretty survivable build. You'll be granting yourself some temporary hit points, ideally every encounter, you'll have shield, and you'll have this Calculate Threats ability to keep you alive. Okay, and I think that about does it. I think this could be a really fun build. Uh, obviously, things don't always work out in this ideal situation. Uh, depends what the monsters and what your GM have in store for you. But the nice thing about the Psychic is that these are just cantrips. So if you start down this ideal path and then maybe something doesn't work out and you have to change things up, it's fine. You're not wasting a spell. You're not wasting your alchemical items like a, an alchemist would that you can't get back later. These are not limited resources. So use them to your be the best of your ability. But if it doesn't work out quite right, oh well, you're still going to be contributing. You'll still be doing damage and ideally you'll still be having fun. All right, that's all adventures.